All right, so let's start off with the segment addition problems. Uh, so again, with these, we want to identify which two parts we're adding together to equal one whole. All right, so with this first one here, again, identify what is the whole, what are the two parts, and I'm gonna set up an equation. Uh, so there's my equal sign right there. I'm gonna have everything that is the whole right here, and then everything over here, I am going to add the parts together. So in every single problem, you're gonna have two parts, and you're gonna have one whole. Uh, so in this problem, the two parts are 2x minus 13 and 10. So if I were to combine those values together, they would equal x plus 4. And here's my 2x minus 13. There's my 10. And then x plus 4 is what the entire thing equals. And what's kind of nice about this is every single problem will have this. It will have two smaller parts that add together to equal one larger whole. And now that I have this equation, I'm just gonna rewrite it so it looks a little nicer. And the next thing that we want to do to solve this is that we want to get all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other. Now you have a couple different ways to do this. You could simplify and combine like terms first, or you can move everything separately. Question. Uh, all right, so the suggestion is these like terms here, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And if you were to combine them, what do you get? You get three, and not just a three, but a negative. Oh, that makes sense. So it doesn't really think about whether or not it's positive or negative, just the negative bigger so it would come down. That works. All right, now from here, now I'm going to probably move the three to the right and the x to the left. I'm doing that so that I can get rid of some negatives. And this problem is just asking to solve for x. So at this point, I am done. x equals 7. Now, if we hadn't grouped these two terms together, because I know there are some people that are doing that, of just getting rid of them separately, is that you could have added 13 to both sides to get 2x plus 10 equals x plus 17, and then you could have subtracted the 10 from there. And again, you would have gotten to the same thing that we did earlier. Uh, it's just doing it in one extra step. So if this second way makes more sense to you, no judgment, you're getting the right answer. So both are doing the same thing. One is just combining first and then solving. This one is bypassing the whole combining and just solving from there. So either way is good for me. Any questions with the first one? <laughs> the second one.
And so again, if you didn't quite get the first one, hopefully now you can start to see at least how we're going to set up our equation. Again, recognize what are the parts, what is the whole, add the parts together, set it equal to the whole thing. So we have a part and a part, so we're going to add those together. And together, they're going to equal eight. So again, identify your parts and set them equal to the whole. And then whatever strategy works best for you, uh, we can combine like terms or you can move each term over as you'd like. Makes no difference to me. Uh, if you wanted to combine like terms, I am going to be combining these X's together. Again, that's one X plus two X. Give me three X's. And then the negative 18 and the negative four, they're on the same side, so I'm gonna add them together. We add two negatives together, it just gives us a bigger negative number. So I'm getting three X minus 22 equals eight. And then hopefully from here, we're comfortable with solving. Just giving people a moment that are writing it down. So I'm getting three X to equal 30. And since it's three times that, I'm gonna divide by three and divide by three. So X is equal. So those were the two segment addition problems. Again, the answers were X equals seven and X equals 10. Anybody have any specific or general questions with the segment addition? All right, just to make sure that we do feel comfortable with those, I'm gonna now just create a problem. And the people at home can obviously try, check their answers when I do the answers, people in here. Uh, you can obviously ask questions, just make sure that we do feel comfortable with this skill. Uh, so this is an extra problem. So who wouldn't mind just trying this problem? Uh, we're just solving for X. Um, yeah, nice job. And I'll mute myself so if people have questions.
All right, so is there anyone remote that has any questions with this one? If you do, you can always plug it into the chat, or if you want to know, uh, is your answer right? You can always say, hey, I got X minus five, throw it in a direct message, and I can let you know right back. So, something to think about. I'll be for it. Oh, sorry about the delay. There's a few good bus routes, phone ringing, all that stuff. Uh, sorry, actually, was fine.
right. So the new thing that we uh, moved on to last week was the same general concept of parks and holes. Uh, but this time it's working with angles instead of lines. So again, we want to identify what two angles are the smaller angles and which angle is the biggest angle and add them together. So same concept, which is nice and consistency, but the part that's a little bit new is how to identify which angles are what. What is ABC versus ABT versus TBC? Uh, they all have the letters I can see in the diagram, but again, which angle goes with what? Uh, so the key with these angles are going to be that middle point, that middle letter. That's telling you what angle you're talking about. Unfortunately, we're all talking about angle B. That's because we have three angles for angle B. We have option one, we have option two, and then we have option three. So which of these angles goes with the red angle, which one goes with the green, and which one goes with the blue? So that's kind of the challenging point at this crossroads of our problems. Uh, so the first one, A, B, T. I had a student that said that she liked thinking about these best as directions. So you start at A, you go to B, you finish at T. So that means that A to B to T is the red angle. So we wanna find one of the parts. The T, B, C is going from T to B to C. So that means that one of the parts is 110 degrees. So when I write out my equation, I don't know one of the parts. I know the other one. And then the last one of A, B, C is A to B to C. So I know that the entire thing adds to 140 degrees. And again, I said these were the easier of the other problems because as you can see, it's not that hard to solve. 110 plus what is 140? The answer will be 30 degrees. So our question mark is 30 degrees. And if we want to make it official and formal, I'm going to say the measure of angle A, B, T is equal to 30 degrees. But I'm not going to be picky and I'll accept either one. All right, moving on to number four. I'll scroll down in case anyone still needs some of that work. New problem, same skill. Uh, I'm going to draw up the diagram and then identify which angles are the parts, which angles are the holes, and then go from there. All right, the first unknown is IHN. I recognize that that is this angle right here, because again, I to H to N. So this is unknown. The measure of angle IHG, that's going from I to H to G. So that is the whole, that is the biggest part, that is 154, which means this other angle here must be the 46 degrees. You can also use the process of elimination. The part has to be smaller than the whole. So I knew that this angle here had to be one of the two parts. Okay. 46 plus our unknown degree is equal to 154 degrees. All 
I'm going to subtract 46 degrees from both sides. And as a result, I'm going to get 108 degrees. So these were kind of nice just because they only took one step to solve. They're also nice because the concept of adding two parts together to get one big whole is the same as what we were doing earlier. So I'm not going to give you an extra one of these because I don't think that these are very challenging. The ones that become more challenging is when we throw the algebra into it. Uh, so the next problem I'm going to give you is working again with the same skill, but now these are going to have a little bit of algebra to them. Then after we go over the two problems, then I'll give you an extra problem just to make sure that we feel comfortable with adding two things together. All right, so find x if bcy is 130 degrees, ycd is 2x plus 6, and the measure of bcd is 19x. So they've given us all three components. They've given us the two parts, and they've given us the whole. However, the 2x plus 6 and the 19x do not have a set value yet. We have to figure out what x equals. So the first one being bcy. I'm going to start at B, go to C, finish at Y. So this angle is 130 degrees. Y, C, D. Y to C to D is 2X plus 6. And that means that the last one of 19X must be the whole. So B to C the D, this one is 19x. So I'm going to add the blue and the red together and have it equal the green. Thirty degrees plus 2x plus 6 is equal to 19x. Now, just like the previous problems, I can either combine like terms first into 136, or you can subtract them individually. Now, what I'm noticing is I don't have any other constants. So I'm just going to combine them into 136 degrees, because it doesn't really make sense to move them to the other side, because there's nothing there waiting for it in the world of constants. So I'm going to say 136 plus 2x is equal to 19x. And then I'm going to take that 2x and subtract it from both sides. Cancels out on the left. I'm getting 17x on the right. So I get 136 is equal to 17x. And I'll divide by 17. And working with mental math or a calculator, again, I don't mind if you use a calculator for every single computation that we have in this class. If you want to double check what 19 minus 2 is, knock yourself out. I'm okay with that. Uh, but 136 divided by 17 is going to give you x equals this is the answer to number five. Anybody have any general or specific questions with number five here?
Number six, this is the last homework problem that we had. We want to find X. If the measure of angle C, D, E is 143 degrees, so I'm recognizing that C to D to E is going to be our whole. So I'm going to write 143 degrees is what my equation will equal. And then that means that C, D, J, and J, D, E would be my two parts. So C, D, J is C, D to J. So that's going to be 11X plus 2. And then J to D to E is going to be the 13X minus 3. Need a little more space. Then once you have your equation set up, we can solve for X. Uh, now, in this case, I do have a constant on the right, so you're free to add the 3 and subtract the 2 or combine the 3 and the 2 first. Completely up to you. I've been combining, so I'm going to do them separately this time. And then these, I will just have to combine 11 plus 13 is going to give me 24 X equals 144. And I'm going to divide by 24. And again, using mental math or your calculator, I'm getting X equals six. Now I said this before, and I'll just say it again. The problems I give you, I'm going to try to make them be integers. So if you are getting decimals or fractions, uh, unless I specifically warned you that it might come out to being a decimal fraction, you can probably anticipate that it's going to be an integer. Uh, so I'll give you a warning if it's not going to be, but otherwise I'm going to try to make sure that all the problems work out nicely for you. So you don't have to worry about any of those questioning answers of this is weird. Is it right or not? Um, so to get the answer, X equals uh, before I give you a problem for you guys to try, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to try this one, solving for x.
go ahead and polish off this problem. Uh, so what we're going to do from here is uh, I feel like we're okay with moving forward that whether or not people's math skills are exactly lined up to where they should be. I feel like people understand the general concept. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you can go ahead and silence those phones. And gentlemen over here, if we could just go ahead and end our conversation, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start the next section. And by start, we're going to talk about six words. Uh, because the entire section is about angle relationships. So I just want to go through the six relationships that we're going to be using. And then tomorrow we'll actually do some math problems that involve using those relationships. Uh, so again, today is just going to be what the relationship is, a quick little definition, maybe a picture. And then tomorrow we'll actually use it. Uh, so pretty low key with that. Uh, so this is section five. And we have angle relationships. Now, the type of relationships we're going to be talking about, they're going to be very subtle because I'm going to say that we have vertical angles. Now, the fact that we have vertical angles, that means we can do something with those angles. So if you don't know what a vertical angle is, right now is fine. But after we go over these notes, if you still don't recognize that vertical angles mean something and you don't have a way of getting to that something, then you won't be able to do the problem. Question. Isn't that right? All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is adjacent. So those may know what an adjacent thing is. That means that it is next to. So right now I am adjacent to the smart board because I am next to the smart board. I am not adjacent to the door across the room because I'm not next to it. So it's the same thing with angles. It's angles that are gonna be right next to each other. Now they're not just next to each other, but if they are adjacent, that means that they're going to share a vertex and they're going to share at least one side. So this is going to be a pair of angles. Who share both a side and a vertex. Now to help connect what is an adjacent angle, all the problems that we just did dealing with the angle relationships and whether it was algebraic or more straightforward, those parts that add up to a whole, all those little angles were adjacent angles. So just to go back to one of the pictures, that this angle here and this angle here, they shared the vertex of A and they had this common side. So they're right next to each other. So for the picture of adjacent angles, So angle one and angle two are considered adjacent angles. A is the common vertex. And AC 
that ray is the common size. So since I have a common side and a common vertex, I can conclude that angle one and angle two are adjacent. What I can do with that information? Well, again, if I know that VAD is a certain measurement, then I know that angle one and angle two when added together will definitely give me that bigger angle because I know they're right next to each other. Next up is a linear pair. So a linear pair is going to be a pair of angles that form a straight line. Now what that would look like. So I'm going to first start off with that straight line. So this line is a connection of two rays. One ray is ray AB going in one direction. The other ray is AC going in the opposite direction. Now, since rays are straight and these two rays are opposite, they form a complete line. Now we're talking about angles. So I'm gonna put in another ray. That ray will be ray AD. I now have angle one and angle two. Together, angle one of BAD and angle two of DAC, they would be a linear pair, meaning they form a line with their opposite rays. Now, why would this be useful? Well, a line is a total of 180 degrees. So I know that if I took the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, it equals 180 degrees. This will be unique because just like the problems we did, if I only gave you the measurement of angle one and angle two and said, oh, by the way, they form a linear pair. I never told you what the sum of them were, but because they're a linear pair, we can assume it equals 180 degrees. So that means I'm going to start doing problems where I'm not giving you all the information, just black and white. Some of it is assumed. All right, next up will be vertical angles. So we're gonna use some of the words that we have used to help define this. We're gonna have two non-adjacent angles that are formed by two intersecting lines. All right, so the fact that they are non-adjacent, that means that vertical angles cannot be next to each other. So they can share a vertex, but they cannot share a side. 
they're also created by two intersecting lines. So if the fact that they're lines, that means that they're both straight. They do not bend or break or curve or anything like that. And they're intersecting. Well, when lines intersect, they only intersect at one point. So I can have this line right here. And I'll have this line right here. And we're going to say they intersect at point. Um, we'll do point. So I've just formed two pairs of vertical angles. So let's start off with angle one. I'm claiming that the vertical angle is non-adjacent, meaning it's not next to it. So it can't be this angle up top and it can't be this angle down below. It has to be the one that is exactly opposite from it. So that means that angle one and angle two are vertical angles. I can also say that angle three and angle four are vertical angles. What's unique about vertical angles? They're always equal. They always are the same exact value. So congruency means that it is equal. So if I wanted to form some sort of relationship and I knew that angle one was 30 and angle two was negative 52x plus 75, and I said, what is angle two equal? No math involved. If one is 30 degrees, then two must also be 30 degrees because they are vertical angles. A moment to finish writing things down. And if you did miss anything, I will be posting this video as well. Uh, I do apologize. I didn't think about pausing the recording, so during the homework going over it, everything was being recorded. So it'll be a long video, but not much content. So if we had complementary angles, those are just a pair of angles that add up to 90 degrees. So specifically, when you pair two angles together, they form a right angle. Angle one and angle two, I put that little red square in to show that that angle BAD forms a right angle. And if we were to add angle one and angle two together, that's what would give us that right angle.
Second to last word, supplementary. If you were to have supplementary angles, that means that you have a pair of angles that add up to 180 degrees. It would be the same thing as having a linear pair if they were next to each other. And then just to show you a picture different than what would be a linear pair. Uh, so if I just had two angles that were in existence, one was 120 degrees, one was 60 degrees. Together, these two angles would add up to equal 180 degrees. So they would be considered supplementary. Or again, they could form a linear pair. The bottom is a line and then another ray coming out of that. And a word that you guys should have seen before. It just when something is perpendicular. That's when you have two intersecting lines, segments, or rays. That form a 90 degree angle at its intersection. So I hinted that sometimes you can look at a picture and you can't just assume that it has a certain angle relationship. But if I wrote that angle or uh, let's say lines L and M are perpendicular, I know that if I had this line here and this line there, so we'll call that L and M, even though I'm not putting that little square in there, if I said that it was perpendicular, then we can assume it's 90 degrees. So that's just a way for us to bypass that little square in the corner is that if I don't put that there, but I say it's perpendicular, then you can go ahead and you can just draw a square in there because of it. All right, so those are the relationships that we're gonna be using tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll do some problems kind of like we normally do. Maybe I'll go over a problem, give you a problem and so on and so forth of working with these relationships. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording as soon as I get my mouse to the screen. This is a new, new, new